Hey guys, Kevin here for the Doctor Who Christmas special called The Husbands of River Song. Now, I was definitely interested in this, to say the least. I mean, you guys have known, not just because I've loved this series, I mean, Doctor Who's become one of my favorite shows on TV, but also because after such a very dramatic, heavily emotional series, I was really thinking that this episode would just be a lot more fun, and that this would be a fun adventure that the Doctor would go on, and was this episode fun? Yes, it was a very fun episode, I will say that. But like the rest of this series has been, it was a lot more poignant and a lot more emotional than I thought it was going to be. And that's what made this episode, I think, really stand out for me. I overall really enjoyed this, um, especially the fact that I didn't really know the character River Song before this. I felt like I still got attached to her. I feel like I still had that attachment that the Doctor had just because the way they played her character here. And the thing I like is that this was an episode where, if you've never seen River Song before, they basically showed you why River Song is so important to the Doctor, and I really love that. And me personally, I was like, well, what's River Song really going to contribute? Because they acted like it was a big deal. And you guys have to understand, the last time we saw River Song was when David Tennant was... Um, the Doctor, so roughly like eight years, like very, like I think 2008 was the last time we saw her, so roughly like 10 years ago, um, actually no, like eight years ago, that was the last time we saw anything of River Song, and I really love this episode because of that. But let's just get in this episode because overall it was a lot of fun, but it also had a, some very good emotional moments here. We start off on Christmas Day in 5343 on the human colony of Mendoric Stellora, and Nardol is wandering the streets searching for the surgeon um, appointed by River Son to attend to her dying husband. And uh, basically, he wrongly believes that the doctor to be the surgeon he's looking for. Um, Basically, you know, because the doctor is a doctor, so he thinks that the doctor is an actual doctor, which I thought was kind of funny. And I like the way this episode starts. The doctor, you can tell, is really, I don't think, into Christmas that much. Like, to me, at least, it didn't really seem like he was into Christmas. Everybody's singing along. He's kind of isolated in this trailer. And I was interested in seeing how he was going to be in this, because as we know, he had his memory wiped of Clara. And I wanted to see if, you know, maybe there were some after effects of that. And the Doctor's still acting pretty much the same way he was, except I do feel like he's a little bit disconnected. And maybe it's just because he's a bit confused as to what's going on that he really just can't get into Christmas this year for whatever reason. So, uh, the other thing I like this episode is that while this is a Christmas episode, it wasn't necessarily a Christmas special. It was more like Christmas is just in the background and our main story focuses on River Song. I definitely really love that. So... He's approached by this woman, he doesn't know who it is, and uh, bringing him to River Song, who fails to recognize him. Now, what's interesting about this is, when he first met River Song, she recognized him, but he didn't recognize her. So this was a very good, um, I think, of, you know, a very good like, reversal of that, I definitely like that, you know, the fact that she doesn't recognize this doctor, but he knows who she is, was very good the way they did that, and, uh, mainly it's because it's a result of it being his first encounter with her in, as the 12th doctor, so obviously she doesn't notice him at first, but then she introduces the doctor, she realizes who he is, and she introduces the doctor to her husband, King Hydroflax, and obviously the doctor's a bit upset, mainly because he's supposed to be her husband, if you guys didn't know, Rivers Son and the Doctor are married, um, were married once before, and, uh, basically, uh, he's increasingly frustrated with her failure to recognize him, you know, she never realizes that this is her husband, it's actually kind of sad, I thought this was actually pretty sad that we saw this, I mean, clearly the Doctor sees the connection he has with her, but she doesn't, just because she doesn't remember him, so... Basically, we also see her flirtatious interactions with Hydroflax. He's really not enjoying that. And he reveals to Nardal that he isn't a surgeon before River takes him to a nearby room to discuss the operations he's supposed to be performing. Now, the thing I love about this is, again, she doesn't realize that he's not a doctor because she doesn't, rem you know, she doesn't remember him at all. He remembers her, but she doesn't remember him. And I thought that really is, it was one of the things that made this episode really worthwhile, I have to say, honestly. I like this episode a lot more because of that, and I wasn't really expecting that. 
And uh, it's one of the things that made this episode as strong as it was, was this whole thing with her not knowing him, but him knowing her. And it really made things, I think, a lot more tragic than it was going to be. It really didn't seem like it was going to be a huge deal, but it is a huge deal throughout this episode, and I definitely like that. Now, this episode, like I said, was definitely fun. Like, it's fun to see her um, interact with her husband and him getting completely rejected. It was actually pretty funny to watch, and they did it. I like they kind of played this for laughs. So, River explains to the doctor that the object lodged in Hydrax's brain is a diamond which he recognizes to be the Halasi Androver before then asking to his surprise if he's able to remove Hydroflax's entire head with the diamond inside. And the doctor persists in trying to get her to recognize him, but to no avail, and they are then interrupted by Hydroflax, who is now fully aware of River's true intentions, that... River wants to kill her husband because obviously he's dying. So after Hydroflex detaches his head from his mechanical body, River uses a sonic trowel to defend herself before contacting Ramon to teleport herself and the Doctor and Hydroflex's bagged head outside of the ship. And upon landing on their backs in the snow, as a result of Ramon teleporting them slightly above the ground, the Doctor begins to laugh at their situation, exclaiming that it has been a while since he last laughed. And... That was very interesting that we saw this. I mean, think about what the Doctor's been through. He knows that there's someone named Clara, but he has no memory of her. So obviously this has probably been confusing him a lot. He probably has had a lot of problems with trying to stay happy. I mean, even though Clara's wanted him to stay happy, he doesn't remember her. It's obviously something that's been puzzling him. So I like that he said, you know what, I haven't laughed in a while. This is one of the first times I've laughed. And just hearing that is actually quite sad. It's one of the things that makes this episode as good as it is, and I really love seeing that. So, basically, um, I, I definitely liked finding that out, that the Doctor uh, hasn't laughed before. And although the Doctor's convinced that River does know who he is, she once again denies it. Every time he tries to be like, okay, do you remember me? Do you remember me? She just, she doesn't remember him. And, she's, again, it's because she's never seen him in this 12th incarnation. So before Ramon shows up, whom she introduces as her actual husband, now this was very interesting. There's a reason why this episode's called The Husbands of River Song, because you have three husbands throughout this episode. One she knows, one that she hates, and one that's her actual husband. So in a conversation between River and Ramon, it's revealed that she purposely crashed Hydroflax's ship in their location as she would likely be likely to encounter the Doctor. However, as she is not aware that the Time Lords grant the Doctor a new set of regenerations, um, her photographs of him do not include his 12th incarnation. So, that's why she doesn't recognize him, which I thought was a very good twist, and I like finding this out, that she basically just didn't know of this regeneration because of the time of the Doctor. She hasn't seen him since then, and I like finding that out here. Um... And that's something that was definitely very well done. And I gotta say, I really like the character River saw in this episode. Just the banter between the two of them was really funny. The way that she was trying to take over, I definitely loved. And believing Nardal to have information about River, Hydroflex's body uploads him by decapitating him to use his head as his own. And meanwhile, the Doctor, River, and Ramon have returned to the TARDIS with River stating that as they can't find the Doctor, they will have to steal it. And with the Doctor now taking advantage of River's oblivious to his identity... He acts as if he's entering the TARDIS for the first time. So I like the way that he was playing around because he can clearly tell that River does sort of know who he is. So he's trying to act as if, oh, you know, I'm just some stranger. So I like the way he played along here because obviously he's he's just not getting through there. So there's no point. So when it's unable to take off, the doctor suggests that it's because Hydroflax's head is in the TARDIS while his body is not. And that would obviously make sense. I mean, his head's there. It's just, it's not going to start. It, it makes sense why it's not going to start. So, hearing Nardole call, calling for help, Ramon is tricked into walking towards Hydroflax's body, which is holding Nardole's head at gunpoint. Hydroflax's head allows his body to locate the TARDIS, with it becoming apparent that it also acquired Ramon's head as it forced its way inside. And with Hydroflax's head and body now both in the TARDIS, is able to travel to the starship Harmony and Redemption, where River requests that the Mitri um, Dud Fleming Deadlock seals the baggage held in order to prevent Hydroflax's bo body pursuing them further. So, still unaware of who he is, River talks to the doctor with the doctor and River in this restaurant about the diary. Um, again, really summed up the way the Doctor has been this entire series. I really love this. She talks about her diary, and she's writing about all these adventures with him and how she's saddened by the fact it is nearly full. And it becomes very apparent that River intends to sell the dime. Now, he asks her, why is, you know, is, is it sad? And she's asking, why is it sad? 
And we're realizing here that the reason it's so sad is because River died. River Son died when David Tennant was the doctor. And the doctor knows this, and he knows that she's not really there. Very much like Clara, he's going through a very similar situation. The difference is he didn't bring her back here. He didn't, you know, he wasn't the one that brought her back. She just somehow found him, and he knows that she's dead and that she's going to die, and it's just really sad because she doesn't know, even know who he is, and that's why this is so sad here. So, the interested buyer, basically, we realize that River intends to sell the diamond rather than return to Halasi, and the interested buyer is called Scratch, so called because of a scratch across his head, which that character was so sick. I love that he was just, like, taking his face off. Uh, the Doctor's reaction to that enough was hilarious. I, I love seeing that. I mean, the Doctor's reaction is our reaction. He's obviously grossed out. I mean, it's it's disgusting. So, it's basically, it separates in two where he stores a device which can transfer River's payment, and following the revelation that all the re restaurant's guests are all the same species as Scratch, River and the Doctor also discovered that they highly honor King Hydroflax and are therefore reluctant to hand over his bagged head, while, which contains the diamond, because obviously Hydroflax to them is this god, and they're not gonna, you know, agree to give over his head because they admire him so much. So after revealing the head and then attempting to escape, they're stopped by Fleming, who was tricked into entering the baggage hold, and then release Hydroflax's head in order to avoid losing his head. And with Fleming informing Hydroflax's by the superiority of the Doctor's head, it destroys its original head, leaving only the diamond. So upon being asked about the whereabouts of the Doctor, she explains that she does not know and exclaims how he doesn't love her enough to find himself with her. It is then that she realizes that he has been with her all along, and... I loved that we saw that. I love that we found that out. I love that she's realizing that in this episode. Because I really thought this entire episode she was never going to find that out. But that really makes it very, very effective here. Um, you know, the scene where she's just talking. The Doctor's trying to be like, River, River, it's me. It's just, it's a very powerful scene. And as River's timeline is nonlinear, she was aware of the meteor strike, which she used as part of their escape plan. Also catching the diamond in the process. So, River was pretty much two steps ahead of him the entire time. Like, she very much knew what she was doing, and I think she knows that she's dead. So, the Doctor uses Scratch's device to stop Hydroflax's body before heading to the ship's bridge where River is already, and while the ship is crashing, River realizes that they are heading towards the planet Derillium, the location of the Singing Towers, which is the first place that these two ever met. That's why this is such a big deal. Um, basically, she sends her final... Now, the saddest thing about this is that this is where she spends her final nights with the Doctor. That's why this is such a poignant scene, because that's the last scene she'll ever share with the Doctor. So the Doctor teleports River inside the TARDIS, however, she then has it materialize around the Doctor, and after realizing they're unable to save the ship, they flee back into the TARDIS, but the impact of the crash knocks them both unconscious, and the Doctor regains consciousness prior to River checking her pulse and then retrieving the diamond from the floor. So after traveling slightly forward in time, the Doctor suggests to someone searching for survivors of the crash that he build a restaurant with a view of the Singing Towers and giving him the diamond to fund its construction. Traveling forwards in time once again, the Doctor books the table on the balcony for Christmas Eve in for Christmas Day in four years' time. And this final scene between River and the Doctor, I thought, was fantastic and they really couldn't have done it better. I really love the way it was done. It really felt like a fantastic closure to River. Because like I said, she doesn't know she's going to die. She doesn't know this is going to be her final night. The Doctor, though, when he was David Tennant, saw this happen. He saw River die. He saw that she's going to die. And this is where she's going to die. She doesn't know that she's about to die, but the Doctor does know. And the scene he had with her just really gave him that closure that he needed and that we needed. I heard River Song wasn't necessarily a great character. In fact, a lot of people really despise her. But this scene for me, I really loved it, and I really felt it was a great send-off to the character. Just in one episode, I really thought they did it perfectly. So when River awakes, she's told that the doctor's waiting for her at their table, and it transpires that Hydroflex's body, including the heads of Ramon and Nardole, were pulled from the wreckage and put to work as a waiter in the restaurant, and the doctor gives River a present, which turns out to be the sonic screwdriver that she had in the last episode we ever saw her. Now, the interesting thing about this that I found out, the doctor, as David Tennant, witnesses um, himself in the future giving her the sonic screwdriver, and he wonders, why would I give her the sonic screwdriver? He's wondered this his entire life. 
Now, as this doctor, he's realizing, I'm in the future, I'm going to give her the sonic screwdriver. Mainly because it's his last gift to her. The fact that she kind of outsmarted him, the fact that she had this plan, I mean, she kind of thought that she could be as brilliant as the doctor and, and do what the doctor could do. And... As they admire the singing towers, River asks whether the stories this that whether the stories that this will be their final night together are true. To which the doctor replies, "Spoilers: a phrase commonly used by River when the doctor asks her about events which he hasn't experienced yet." Which I love that scene. Just the way they bonded was really great, and I like that the doctor's not going to tell her. He's not going to tell her that she's going to die. He's going to let her see what's going to happen, and he's accepting that she's going to die. And this really felt like we came full circle with Clara's death mainly because the doctor had his memory wiped and I think the doctor's realizing here who cares if I didn't know who Clara was she died I don't know her it's the past and it's really sad but at the same time it's really finally the doctor's moving on and he's also needs to move on from River's death which is something else that I don't really think he ever really moved on from. I think he's always kind of thought about it and now he's kind of getting that chance to give her the closure that she needs and the doctor asks her about her events, which she hasn't experienced yet. Although the doctor insists that there's no way of avoiding the ending of their times together, he reveals a night on Derillium lasts 24 years, and uh, basically that they're going to be there for the next 24 years. They're going to spend these 24 years together, and uh, I love the way it ended with, and they both lived happily ever after, and then they quickly cut away the happily ever after. They, they uh, you know, the ever after went away, and then, and they both lived happily, and then just the word happily was there, because yeah, River dies. River is going to die. We know that she's going to die. The doctor knows she's going to die, but they're going to be happy. They're going to do it happily. She's going to die happily, and they're going to die together, and she's going to die with him, and he's going to see her die, and it's really going to give him that closure that he needs. He knows it's coming, and he can't stop it. He knows that. He knows that she's going to die. He knows that they're not going to have any moments more together, and that this is probably going to be the final time he ever sees her, and I really thought that was a great conclusion. So overall, guys, this was a really great episode. My only real complaint with this episode is I found the villain to be extremely cheesy I really will say that some of the over the top stuff really didn't fit with the tone of this episode um the episode overall I thought was really fun at points especially with the whole river song not knowing who the doctor was I thought that was a lot of fun definitely but I did feel like we were kind of missing it just it, it didn't feel like you know necessarily fit in here it did get a bit convoluted and I didn't care as much about that as I did more of the Doctor and River's relationship. That's what I cared more about. And that's really what this episode was about. It was about the Doctor finally giving River that closure that she needs. And him realizing that he's going to be the one to see her die. And now he's realizing why he's giving her that sonic screwdriver. You know, it's all come down to this. And... The way they just did all this, I thought was fantastic. I loved it. It was a brilliantly um, close scene, and again, really had an emotional impact. I've loved that Doctor Who has had all series long. And, you know, a lot of these Christmas specials, they're not supposed to necessarily connect to the series, but this one really did. It really felt like this. we've now come full circle with Clara's death. I mean... The Doctor knows, you know, the Doctor doesn't know Clara, much like River didn't know who the Doctor was. He knows there was a person named Clara in his life, he knows he went on adventures with her, he knows that she died, but he doesn't remember anything really about her. And that's the thing that's obviously really going to hurt him, but I think the Doctor's realizing, you know what, I need to move on from this. She died, I can't dwell on this, I need to move on. And it's a really great way for us to also move on from Clara, just realizing that there's going to be a new companion, there's going to be someone new in there, and I like that we didn't get any hints of the new companion in this episode, because that's not what our main focus is here. The focus is for the Doctor to move on. The focus is for the Doctor to realize that he can't keep bringing people back, and that he can't change, um, you know, he can't cheat death, he just can you know, even though he wanted to keep Clara alive, he had to have his memory wiped, and she just had to die. Clara's not dead, though, obviously, you know, she's out there in that spaceship with, uh, Ashitor, so, you know, she's out there, and then, of course, River Son has died, though, and he knows that she's gonna die, and there's nothing he can do to get her away from that, and I don't think the Doctor's mission was ever to get River Son away from her death, I don't think that was ever his mission, because he didn't know when she was gonna die, he just knows that she dies, and he gives her a sonic screwdriver, that's all he knew, and he wanted to prepare her for that, and he basically just wanted to make this death 
the best closure she could get and wanted to go out, um, wanted to go out, you know, knowing that he did whatever he could to help her out. And I really love it. I really thought they did a great job with that. This didn't necessarily feel like a Christmas special, but it didn't really need to. It just, it was a good after, you know, it was a good, like, kind of, like, epilogue for the series overall. They really wrapped it up nicely, and they wasn't too neat, though. Like, I don't think they ended this series too neat because the whole thing with Clara. That still was very powerful. It still was my favorite twist of this series, and I really think they handled all that very, very well. So overall, guys, Doctor Who's over for this year. Doctor Who's now officially over, and it's been great. I've loved reviewing it all all year long. It's been a fantastic show. I can't wait for um, Series 10. I think it's going to be an amazing series. There are rumors that Peter Capaldi might be leaving, and this would make sense mainly because, let's look at Matt Smith. When Clara was introduced on the show, that was Matt Smith's final year. That's when that's when Clara was introduced. So it would really make sense for this to be Peter Capaldi's last year because a new companion's coming in. Usually what they do is they do two years of one comp with the first companion, they last two years, and then the last one that comes on, well, I'm just assuming they're going to do this because they do it with Matt Smith, um, is that, he, you know, the new campaign is going to come, the Doctor's eventually going to regenerate. I do feel that time is coming. As good as Peter Capaldi is, I do feel really one more series is what we need for this Doctor. Then we can move on to another Doctor, just because it can't get too repetitive, and I don't want it to get too repetitive, and I don't want it to become just too much. So honestly, Peter Capaldi possibly leaving, I would be fine with that. If we get a really great series and they just keep doing what they've done this series, I do feel we're in for a much more fun series next year. I will definitely say that. I think it's going to be hopefully just as deep, but I do feel we are still going to have a much more fun series and hopefully a very good sound to Pierre Capaldi because I do feel that is going to probably be his last series as the 12th Doctor. Um... Who is the new companion going to be? I don't know, and frankly, I don't care. We're going to get to that point when that, you know, we will cross that bridge when we get there. I don't know who it's going to be. That's not really what matters. What matters is that this was a fantastic series, and I've loved reviewing every episode of this series, and I can't wait for next year's series. But let me know what you guys saw this Christmas special overall. I'd love to hear your thoughts, and I will see you guys in my next video, which will be for a movie review. And I know I haven't reviewed a TV show in a very long time, guys, so I'm very happy I was able to review this. Homelands and Ash vs. Evil Dead, they're coming. They are coming. But like I said, I'm trying to focus on movies right now. Someone even said to me, are you going to catch up on these shows? Yes, I'm going to catch up, okay? I'm going to. I, I'm going to do it. I don't know when exactly, but I'm going to catch up, and you guys will see I can do that. But I will see you guys in my next video, which will be for a movie review, and I will see you guys for that. Okay, And also, hope you guys had a great Christmas. I will see you guys in the next video. Okay, bye.